This is May's Book 2, Daughter of Darkness, Chapter 8, Part 2. I would come upon her, soporific, orbiting a nod, sitting on her ass on the ground, awake and asleep. If you don't know what to do about a situation, I figure you ought to do what's in front of you. First thing comes to mind, and in her case, I discovered all I ought to do was coax her outside, bring her out of herself a little, talk to her, let her know she's not alone. Nobody wants to see anybody go down like that, but I wouldn't walk away, no. So I would take her by the hand and walk her out into the world with me. Come on, sweetie, you need some fresh air. She was in deep, in purple and blue, the kind that never dissolves. I got her out of her room and past the shades and orphans, through the glass doors and out into the sunlight, where she could break in the apricot boots I stole from the thief for her. And if it was daytime, we would drop our stunners and walk down and around the lake on the city side, north past the brilliant Cathedral of Light, then cut up to Broadway toward the Oakland Tribune Tower. In a sixteenth of a mile, from the shores of Lake Merritt, from the daydream world of the wildlife sanctuary, the city turned hard into an urban wilderness, at the epicenter of which was 16th Street and Broadway, downtown. You could find white-collar workers out for lunch with seafood seared with dripping garlic butter, oysters rock and sweet potato fries, shrimp cocktails and marinated mountain trout, alongside cat fights and shouting matches across the streets, kids standing sentry at corners with bindles in their mouths, ready to serve up runners ready to run. The infamous Telegraph Avenue fed into Broadway and major arteries encircled the heart of the city, leaving the cobblestone streets of Oakland's Chinatown in shadows. San Francisco was the queen of the bay, with no intention of bequeathing her throne. Oakland was her dark and disturbed cousin, pushed a dozen miles away from her for safe distance, with that big old bay keeping her violent nature away. But this positioned Oakland well, with her own vital port to profit from all the gathering subjects in devotion to the queen, and not just tourists. Oakland would never be so popular. Her tribune towers stood up to see it all, and tell time on four faces, a relic of the golden age of newspapers. The subway at her feet, the hills behind her, beyond which to the east was Mount Diablo. You could easily see across the bay on a clear day, and we didn't need to look up to the giant faces to know the time. Time to take a train across the bay, underground, and get the hell out of here.